G'day guys, Luke the Drifter here, and we've been on a bit of a trip. We've just come back last night, and what I want to do now is uh, do a handover video, all right? Because I've been in the van for six, seven nights, everything's fresh in my mind, and we're going to be sending these vans all over the place. One's going to Brisbane on Monday, we're delivering it straight to the customer, and I won't be there, for example, or our shop's not going to be there to hand over this van. So the idea of this video is is basically for our customers. It's uh, when you you know receive this van. It might be from a truck driver, uh, one of our drivers. You can watch this video before he even turns up, and when the van turns up, you can watch this a few times and know everything you need to know about how to operate this van. Because I remember when I got it, the first van I've ever had. You know, I just didn't know any how anything worked. You know, and I know how to hook a trailer up, and I know about water tanks from the dots, but the control panel and different things I didn't really understand, so I had to figure out. The diesel heater took me a couple of days to figure out how it worked, you know, so I can show you all of that while it's fresh in my mind. So that's what the purpose of this video is about, okay? Hopefully, if a customer receives one of these vans and they're not sure about how to operate something, they look up this video, we'll have some chapters, you know, hooking up and unhooking the gas system, the water system, etc., and you'll be able to answer all your own questions from this video. The other thing too, I know a friend recently picked up a van, had a three hour handover, all the electrical system, and they didn't remember a single thing from that. And that's pretty common. We, we know from the dot days, we used to do this for the dot trailers, you know, that you do a handout video and you're there talking. It's very hard to keep, to retain all that information. So this video you can watch before you get the van. And by the time you got it, you'll know everything about it um, before you've even picked it up. So I've just driven in here. Very first thing to do is, uh, is to unhook it. So I'll show you a few things there. So this will be the first section is is unhooking the, the van. Right, so I pulled up. Right, we can put the handbrake on. Uh, we'll undo the seven pin flat. Okay, this got a DA35, so you push that button down. All right, and, um, and, and it'll hold there like that. So these hitches are brilliant. They're made in Australia, designed in Australia. The only thing you can ever go wrong with them is when you hook them up if you don't have it in that released position, okay? So if it's in the, I'll show you when you unhook it. But to unhook it, you've got to push that back, all right? And um, see that? You gotta push that button down, bring him back until it locks. Now that's free to come off, okay? Chains can come off. They're in the crossed um, position at the moment. So yeah, make sure you do both your chains up. It's a good idea to have, you know, you've got this little hook on both sides, which is nice. I always like to keep the chains off the ground like that. So handbrake's on. Now, this is the jockey wheel. This is not the standard jockey wheel, but this has got a few extra features, uh, but otherwise it'll be the same. This is a nice little stabilla. Um, level, which I'm using. The small ones that come with it are pretty much, because they're so tiny, they're just inaccurate and it's good to get it nice and level. So we're ready to drop the jockey wheel down. One thing I haven't done, which at the end of the day too, when you're doing vans, you're always going to, same with trailers, you're going to forget something. What I've forgotten, first step is to get this van level. Now we have got the level out, I can see it there, you know, but by looking at the van, I can tell it's probably 50, 60 mils down on this side. So jump over this side, Jake. This is a little kit I've always carried in my 79. There's all sorts of leveling devices you can get. I'm gonna sell these dead set because I think the best, I've tried on all the others and I think the best setup of all is just some blocks. So I reckon it's gonna take about that, and I'm just going to drive up onto that, okay? So, the problem is with the angle ones, by the time you drive onto them, get them just right, you put the handbrake on the Land Cruiser and it's rolled halfway back down there, you know, from the play in the handbrake. Whereas, once I'm on top of that, it's, that's it, you know, I mean, I can estimate what it's down. If it's not right, I'll drive off and put another block on. But the very first step, really, before you unhook, we did that on the trip, didn't we, Jake, a few times? We unhooked and then we're like, oh, we've got to level the van, okay? Um, you can't really level the van with the stabilizers. I mean, you sort of can get a little bit, but you, you really have to get this level first. So let's do that. Just wait there and I'll drive onto it.
How's that, Jake? All right, so very first thing, get your stabilizing blocks down. Look at that, they're up on top now. They don't want to roll off. If you've got an angle block, the plastic angle blocks, it wants to roll off. So I think that's the best. A couple of those 200 by 400 blocks, we can cut them in half. They're really handy. Now if you look on the stabler for the level, look at that, I've estimated that. All right, and it's almost spot on. You know, within 10 mil. Okay, so here's the, uh, I highly recommend getting one of these ARC 750s. They're an option on the website and they're very good. The reason they're very good is a normal jockey wheel can go up and down about that far, same as this. But this has got this much adjustment also. By the time you wind down a jockey wheel, you've only got about that far, or it's got to sink into the ground that far, needs that far to get off the hitch, and you've only got about this much adjustment. And sometimes on different ground, the ground's always going to slope, it's often not enough. So what I can do in this case, drop this jockey wheel right to the ground and then wind it. So I'm not having to wind too far. And that's really important to have that extra adjustability. One thing too with this, you can see jockey wheels are a common thing. It's on the dot trails. We used to, we got to the point we said we're not going to warranty the jockey wheel, right? Because it's a very common thing. And also the stabilizers, you forget to put it up and you drive off and then you ring up and say, oh, I broke and I didn't know what happened, but it just broke, you know. But it's because you've driven off or people forget it all the time. Or not only that, you know, you could, um, you could have it like that, for example. Or you could have, you know, it's really important to get this jockey wheel in the right position. See how this pin is here is locking in? Let's have a look at this, Jake. All right. See how you can lock that into that position over there? Right, but if you were going to say that was... like that let's go there let's bring him out a bit because Jake did this on the trip didn't you Jake so that was there right no problems nice and clear this is locked up but if we come down for a bit of a dip and you went around a corner, that is going to hit that. It's going to break either that or that. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind as well. The best thing for this sort of wheel is to get this wheel, all right? That's how I've been traveling with it like that. Lock it up and like that. I can still use the bag. That's up out of the way. It's not the main thing you can't do is to drop it down. This is a common mistake. You see it all the time. People doing this, they've got a jockey wheel like that. Absolute the worst thing you can do. If you do that, you're going to break jockey wheel. And these are worth 500 bucks. So and our boys at work have done that. Their drivers at work have broken a couple of these and oh so annoying because all they've got to do, right, they, they, they leave it like that and they don't lock that pin in. That's what the pin's for. Alright. So there's a pin there, that's how you use those. And look at that extra, look at that, I can drop that down straight away. As soon as I start winding, that's starting to uh, contact straight away. So this is released. You can see I've used up about 150 mil just to get it off the ball, off the pin. Now if I needed to raise that another 100 mil to get it level, I wouldn't have enough. So next thing to do is to drive the car forward out of the way. A couple more quick, quick things with this. This little piece here. Right, this uh, small chain, if you don't know what that is, anything over, oh, I think it's two ton, 
don't quote me on that, but anything heavier than a certain amount, you've got to have one of these called breakaway. And that's the breakaway there. So what'll happen if that, if your toe, toe ball snaps or your hitch comes out, this here could come out or break. This will pull out of there and that'll activate the brakes. There's a small battery under the bed, I'll show you later, and that'll activate the brakes. So you don't have a runaway trailer. So very important that this little cable is attached and you can use a small D-shackle to attach it and that's how that works. So if that breaks, that's gonna pull out. This, this should be attached to the vehicle separately, okay? So how that was there is a little bit not quite right. That should be attached to the vehicle with a separate um, D-shackle, okay? So that that will, if the vehicle separates, that pulls out, that's the idea of that. Okay, got the handbrake on. And so that's your seven pin. You've got your Anderson plug there. Make sure that when you hook up and unhook, you're pulling everything out and you're hooking everything up. That's your seven pin. Sorry, that's your Anderson plug that's going to charge your battery while you're driving. Okay, that one there. These here, we had a problem on the way back where the brakes are coming on but not the tail lights. A very common thing with these seven pin plugs. And what to do, you get your pocket knife out and what happened, the pins, the pins get, um, they get pressed in like this, see, over time. And then they're just not making contact. So what you do, you get your knife out and you just separate them gently like that. And then that spreads them out. 90% of the time when you've got something, a blinker, left blinker, right blinker, something not working, it's because of those pins. And you just do that and they'll work again. All right. Now, we've got level basically this way. Now I'm going to get level this way. Okay. So you can see I'm a little bit up at the, up at the front here. It's going to wind it down until that's about level. All right. That's it there. All right, so that's probably the first little chapter. Hooking and unhooking. Uh, the handbrake is very important to be about the centre. If it's too loose or the cable stretch, you know, you got it too far back um, and needs adjusting, you can adjust these handbrakes up in this area here, okay? That can be adjusted manually if you've got too much slack. So if you're finding you got to pull the handbrake all the way up here, let it off and adjust in this area here. Alright, so the next thing to do is going to be to throw down your uh, stabilizers. Now I've got these from Tread, which are great. I'm just using them, but I can also just use a couple more of those blocks, all right? I didn't have enough. So I'll show you this here. Alright, get them down. This is very soft ground at the moment, so I'm going to use these, otherwise they're just going to sink into the ground. That's a 19mm socket on a little rattle gun. Very handy. I'm just going to take the weight. I'm not going to use this to raise or lower that, because I've already got it level, okay? You don't need this. These are stabilizers, not to lift, really. Okay, one at the back here. Now with these here, I'll show on the other side, but you can have them like this, but I've found a lot of the time when you pull up, you just can't get them, you can't always get them down. I mean, that's the, the, the height there. All right, so several times I've had to put them out at an angle or back on here, but I've found, I'd rather keep them out this way. Might look a little bit funny, but if this was gonna break, and they can, that's gonna drag, all right? If, it was, if it's uh, this way, and that somehow breaks, that's going to come down, contact the ground. It's going to be, you know, it could be some damage. So I reckon I'd rather have them this way. And then if I can't get them all the way down to the ground because the crown slopes up, at least they're coming out on an angle this way, which is better than this way because that stabilizes them more. So I've found I'd rather have them that way. It's no problems to have them on a bit of an angle, but I'm right at this moment. Some people have said that you, yeah, so look at that. It's pretty high at the back and that's only just contacting. So let's say that was too low to the ground. All right, I can bring that out like that, no worries. All right, yeah, some people have said you shouldn't be using a rattle gun on these, but I'm not um, doing it, I'm not trying to extend them to change the height. I'm just, and we've done this for a while now. We haven't had any problems, so. I think if you don't push it, the rattle gun's fine. That's a bit 
tight. So, this one as well, I'll put that on an angle to show you also. Too far, we'll go that way. Okay, so basically we get our four stabilizers down. This little rattle gun's great, also very handy for your vehicle. Uh, and that's it. Alright, next step. What do you reckon, Jake? I suppose. I think probably the next step is, well you could even do this first, but let's say uh, get the gas running, alright, so we're going to turn the gas on, because what we want is hot water as fast as we can, so the gas is turned on, and uh, look at this Jake, we had a lot of trouble getting this off here, because uh, I've had to use my screwdriver on the pocket knife to jimmy this off, and I've just noticed little instructions here, see that Jake, look at that, push here, comes off. Mm. So we we spent the whole trip not knowing that and we're using screwdrivers and trying to pry this off. You can see where we've half bent it. But it does say on there. Alright, so there's a little tip. Look at that, straight off. Now the other day too, we were trying to get the gas hot water running to have a bath for little Isa. We couldn't get the gas running and it kept uh, the light kept coming on which was a fault. We looked it up as a fault. We couldn't get it running we played around with it and it turned out we'd left the cover on so that's a good system but if you've left that cover on it's not going to work with gas so first thing to do is pull that off and then it can start operating okay all right the next thing we're going to do is to uh, lift up the pop top to do that we need to um, release four brackets so i'll show you that It's a good idea to have a little step. I found this to be the best one. Locks in, some adjustability, got a bag for it. Very handy for different things and also the back step here, the front step there. So what we're going to do now is, is lift up the pop top. Very simple. There's one thing you do is release the latches, okay? There's a handle here which is quite handy, look at that. Okay, so this is a very simple latch but it's very important to do this part here which is latch this in the top position, okay? All right, see how I've latched that up? It's really important, if you don't do that, we'll show you in this one, they can hang down and get caught on this again. So you must latch that in the top position. You can actually walk along here. If you're a bit careful. If I just did that, all right, by the time you get around the other ones, the wind could blow it and it could catch back on there again. So it's really important to latch that up. The other thing I've noticed too is the time you do that and you move it around a bit they can. This is also going to compress so just make sure when you do them up they're nice and firm okay. All right so that's could even go up a bit more like that okay. So just make sure that you can adjust those and get them nice and firm. All right so two latches on the back here. Pretty simple. I can walk on this toolbox, no worries, so it's, that's handy as well. All right. So that's it, really important to latch those up and then we can jump inside. Alright, so normally I'd be travelling like this, reverse cameras off, headlight, the front headlight, the electric awning, we're not using that, power supply, fridge, that'll be on, LED sockets, audio and pump. So we get in here, I can turn the power supply, which powers up this area here, and I can hit this button here, this little control panel, that is the up and down for the actuator. So I'm just going to press that, that's all you have to do. Okay, very simple. Same reverse, press that button to come down. That's going to go up now, we don't have to do anything. It's going to go up on its own and lock out on its own. Whilst doing that, we're going to do 
the uh, awning. Alright, so that's going up. So we're just going to put this rod through that little section there and we're just going to wind it out. You can see the pop top going up. Uh, this piece here, that's a little uh, limit switch it's called and that, that's connected to the actuator. So the when this piece here pushes down that limit switch it'll cut out the actuator. That's how the actuator knows to stop. Okay, and it's also got the same inside the unit for a limit switch when it gets up. So once you press that button, you don't need to worry. You can see here the door is about to hit. All right, so probably a good idea to keep that door closed while you put the awning out. You can bring the awning out about halfway. All right, about there. And then... If you look in here, right, this little section here has to fit, has to go in. It clicks in, see that? And it clicks right in like that, okay? No good at being out of here like this, it has to click all the way in. And for that to happen, these feet have to be tucked in as well, right? So they've got to click right in. Now we can pull that out. Come down. Right, I can get that like that, I can lock that off. Same on this side. If you've got a second person around, got some kids, help, get them to help you with this part. You don't want this, you don't want the wind to get hold of this. And that will ruin your day if you had a big gust of wind, okay? So see how I've put them on a bit of an angle going out that way? If I wanted to and it was windy, I was on my own, I could put a peg in there right now, right? Before it gets out too far, and then wind it right out, but it's not too bad at the moment. I'll wind that out. Now have a look at these um, arms at the top here. There's, there's nothing to say when you've got to stop, right? But it'll get to a point when it gets tighter, and then it'll sag in the middle if you go too far. So, see that there? Not too bad. Now it's sagging in the middle. See, the further I go now, it's going to sag, so I'm just going to come back a little bit, and that's tight there. All right, so that's in there. Now again, get these nice and straight. Get a peg in there as quick as you can. Make sure they're pretty straight, otherwise it'll annoy you. All right, we've got holes in the bottom of these. So a couple of good 30 centimeter stakes. All right, 30 centimeters, that's what you want. Now there is two holes there. We had a big, big windstorm, you know, last week when we were camping on the long weekend. A bit of an angle. Now, I had two of them in, crossed over a bit of an angle. So you can put two in there. If you want to, you can also put a rope over here as well. All right, awning's done. The step, make sure you get the step. All right, last thing you do is make sure you always put that away. If you leave that out, it's going to get damaged. So that step comes out. It does click in like that. Clicks out. Let's set up this kitchen area. I haven't been locking these. If you're going to go on heavy corrugations like, you know, the Development Road or Cape York, you should probably lock those. They can, I've known, they're well known to rattle open, but... Uh, that's up to you. Maybe you just want to lock one of them. I haven't been locking them. Okay, that's it there. Now, that lifts up. This area here, again, we've only just got back from a trip. We haven't even unpacked yet. But I thought, while well, this is all fresh in my head. It does show you, though, um, what you can put in that area. Now we do have a little bub, so we've got a little bit extra gear than normal now. That can go there. And we've got some tubs. 
Oh yeah, here's a little shelf. These lights are brilliant. So I, that's my little charging shelf for your phone. That's some kitchen gear that can go there. So you do have a fair bit of storage space that you can use in this area, okay? If you choose to have the table, that's going to be fitting in there and protect all of that area. So if you wanted to put anything else in there, you'd want to have something that protects it, okay? With the table, okay, the wider legs, they come out. This section can just fit up against there on the on the uh, tire and it just adjusts this to suit. We go a bit higher. All right, pull his legs out a bit. And there you've got a nice solid table for different things. PVC bucket that collapses. That's great for a little bin. We sort of fit that there. And all of the bags really should go in the toolbox. So you've got bags for chairs, bags for all sorts of things. Keep them on the toolbox so you know where they are. Uh, kitchen. If I wanted to light that, right, the gas is on. I haven't got my, it's a lot easier with a, you know, a, a long lighter, but press it in, turn it. Okay, so I've just gone to light the stove and out of gas. So, four kilos. I don't know, now when I went to turn this on just before, I noticed it was already on, so, Jake, did you leave the bottle on? I don't know. When we were traveling yesterday, I think we left that gas on and that would be running the, the, the little hot water system. So maybe we've wasted some gas there, I'm not sure. But we've got this dual system, you can see, it's just a flexible hose, right? So I'm gonna change the bottle, pretty simple. I'm not sure if we've, we'll have to find out. First time I've, you know, used the van and we are away for a week, hot water, stove, cooking every night. So maybe we have used that much gas, in, in which case, We've used, you know, four and a half kilos in a week. Um, more than I thought we would use, but again, I haven't used that hot water system before. Maybe it uses, obviously using some gas. So, turn him on. Okay. And, but the good, I think, rule, of, rule is to turn the gas off when you're traveling is a good, a good idea. Sounds better. All right, so it's good if you've got a little clicker for your, you know, to start that, but again, you've got to hold that in and turn it to get the gas running, okay? So it is quite windy here at the moment. A lot of caravans, I, I know, they've got a stove that pulls out and that blows, blows this heat right away. But we, we are tucked in a little bit here, which is great. So you can see a bit of wind there, but we are tucked in way better than being out here. There's your stove, you've got three burners. Here's your sink, all right, with your cold water. And uh, we'll show you some more things on that. Down here, all right, we've got some space. I've got storage in there of different things. Here is the water, you can see the water there for the, this, the uh, sink, all right? So you've got your hot and cold water. If you have any problems, leaks, you can access up here. And up in here is the gas, okay? A bit of storage there for a few things. You can see the gas fitting here. There's a bayonet fitting there. You can turn that off to isolate this. All right, so, but you can access the ga gas things up in there. Little, sh little uh, drawer. Uh, you've got a cupboard there. You've got your cupboards up here. These are accessible through both ways and we've got lights which we need to turn on so to turn on the lights two things you need to do we've got our leds sockets we'll turn the pump on now that right see the lights still not coming on because there's one more switch 
Although we've turned on the LED in the sockets, right, there's your light switch up here, which we're going to show you more. I've got to turn that one there on, okay? So that's, that's like a master switch for the lights in the van. Now they will come on now, see that? All right, so the good thing with that is if I could have a few lights on, all right, if I want to come past or night time, I can just hit this switch here and everything will go off, okay? So if you want to turn all the lights off at night, you don't have to go and turn that one off and that one off. Just hit it right here, see that? And that will turn them on off. So it's a great little function, that. That also, those lights there operate on this, the lights here. So we'll show that a little bit more in a sec. Uh, while we're here, let's just complete this area. Okay, rear tank full. Uh, the, well, sorry, that's the rear tank here and the front tank. So the rear tank, rear tank will be there. Front tank, that's the grey water tank. Okay, that's empty. Battery is 86%, little voltmeter there. Uh, we've got a main kill switch. If you park your caravan up and not going to use it for a few weeks or a month, turn that off. We've got the pump. That's the audio for your radio and CD player. Uh, the socket, so your, your cigarette sockets around the place. LED lights. Okay, so if I turn that off, your lights are off as well. Okay, that's your master switch for your lights. If I've turned that on and off again, I have to turn them off and on back on here. Fridge, power supply, which powers here. Um, that's a light on the front, like a headlight, and you reverse power to the reverse camera. And down here is a um, good spot for a brush and also your uh, mandatory little fire extinguisher. What I might do is go and open up the bed and then we can um, come inside. Right, so come around here. What we've done is we've popped up the van, we've, we've unhooked it, popped it up. Awnings out, kitchen's ready to go. You know, you can put a pot of water on for dinner. And then we're going to come around and open up this. Now, these latches I have been locking when I'm traveling because you don't want those to pop open. So I have been locking those. But this just comes up on a gas strut. All right, there's two wings here. You can open that. These pull out. Okay, and because of this folding mechanism, there is a couple of little gaps. One of them is down here, you can see this. So we've put this on ourselves, right, which is a bit of uh, rubber, which fills this gap in here. Otherwise that is open there, and we don't want that to be open. So that's what that little section there is. We undo these two latches here, and the bed will pull down. See the section here as well? Okay, this, this part here, has to drop into and contact on the inside of this. You can't have that sitting out, it's got to be in. So if I can just hold that in, drops into place nicely, right? You can have a look under it if you want, see that? So that's got to make contact under there so these wings don't fall out. And then this is on a gas strut as well, give it a little tug and it'll pop up. All right. Now there is some struts here, uh, not struts, there's some um, over center latches. They're not really necessary, right? Because, but that stops that going up. They do have struts, so, but you can put them on if you like. If you don't want to put those on, you don't have to, okay? That's it, basically. That'll stop that going in, all nice and tight, dustproof, etc. That's it. While we're here, let's have a look in this compartment, all right? This one here is your mains pressure in. Now I've had to buy that fitting, if I can remember we'll, we'll get some of those and include it, but it's just a uh, 3.8 or 20 mil um, male thread hose clip fitting. So that'll screw in there. That's for your mains pressure water, okay? But I'd suggest with that, if you, if you hook up to there with a the hose, that will, um, that will bypass your water tanks, okay? Now I've got this small hose here, All right, so let's just pretend that's mains pressure, click that on there, that's not going to fill your tanks, but that's going to operate your shower and your, your, um, your sinks, okay? But I'd suggest don't turn it on full power, okay? You only want sort of half a turn, so the water's coming out. You know what's going to come through this uh, pump? You know, if, if you put a hose onto the pump, you'll see what comes out. You want about the same. You don't want to blast a huge amount of water in there. Um, if you had, you know, on a farm and a bore, which was extra pressure, you might be, you might damage some components in here. So, 
don't turn the water on full blast, okay? And uh, that's what that's for. Yeah, I've made this little hose up because here's my hose here for, for hooking up to the tap, right? But I've made a short hose to use as a filler and we'll show you how to fill those in a sec. But here's your rear tank and your front tank. I'd suggest, right, to close off the front tank and use the rear tank first, okay? What that's doing, the rear tank is here, the second tank is there, you can see them underneath, and the grey water tank is at the front, in front of the axle. So you've got a, one tank here, one tank here. A sensible thing to do would be use the rear tank first, and you're getting rid of that uh, water or the weight from the back. So you've got to use some water first, you may as well use the rear, so that's what I've done. Plus once you run out of water, you know that you're empty, you can then turn that off and turn this one on. At least then you know that you're halfway through your water. So that's not a bad way to do it. The other thing I've found too is if you dump this water, you know, that's gonna, it's all gonna end up this water in your grey water tank, okay? And uh, if you've got, um, what you don't really wanna do is, is fully empty your grey water tank, right? And then fill both tanks at the back because you're gonna transfer then a fair bit of weight at the back. So I'd sort of hold your grey water tank until you start on this second tank and that just balances the water a little bit. But you know you've got three tanks, you want to try and balance it as best you can, so you've got that ability to, to do that. Now here's a bag for my hose to, to hook up to uh, mains pressure, all right? And also the little, the little filler, we'll show you that. Great little bags, these are our power cord hose bags. They are great, fits nicely. Here's the power cord bag, we'll show you that. This is the, the flat out hose reel. They're, they're not cheap, but they're very good. This is the flatter hose reel, it's the uh, sullage hose, okay, 25 mil, 6 meter sullage, so it winds up nice and flat. does fit in there really nicely. And this bag here, that's the mesh bag I'm using for things like this. Make sure you've got some sort of uh, sachet or chemical for the toilet, so that's what these are. These are great, I haven't seen these before. Mark Garner got some from the shop, and look at that, so what you do with these, as soon as you've emptied your toilet, you put a bit of water in there, a litre or two, and you chuck one of them in, that's all you need to do. So that's, I think that's a great little system. Um, I've got some extra concentrate there. I've got a couple of um, just different things, hose fittings, spare bits and pieces, okay? So that's in that little bag there. All right, all these bags you can get from the shops. This is your water pump, 12 volt pump. It'll be a 10 litre a minute, it'll say on there. Uh, operation, 11, 11.3 litres per minute, so 11 litres a minute, okay? So plenty of, plenty of water. You've got a little uh, filter there, all right? So just keep an eye on that. If that's totally blocked up, you'll know. And um, that's it. These fittings here are, are all push-on fittings, okay? So if you did find a couple of leaks, you know, just give them a push. They are all push-on fittings, okay? So, um, but as you can see, we haven't had any trouble there. That stays there. Now with the power, it can get a little confusing and I'll show you a couple of things. It's really, I think, essential to get one of these, which is uh, Amphibium. Uh, basically a 15 amp to 10 amp lead adapter. Okay, because there's my 15 amp lead. You can see that, all right? So I need a 15 amp plug to plug into the caravan. All right, so you have to buy a 15 amp lead, so make sure you get that, because all caravans come with a 15 amp plug, right? So that's a male 15 amp socket, put on there, the socket there, 15 amp lead. But that's, That'll fit in the caravan park, no worries, but if you've got your house, I don't have a 15 amp plug here, and your mate that you're gonna stay at his house, he probably won't have one either. So instead of getting your tin snips and cutting that down or grind it down, which we all used to do, these are brilliant now. So what'll happen, that's a 15 amp socket. All right, so you plug that in there. It's got an RCD, which is great. On, okay, on and off there. Waterproof, very important. And now look at that, that's a 10 amp plug. So that plugs into your house and I can run that power, no problems at all. So very handy. Uh, let's see if I'll reach. Not quite. 
but I've got a power point under the house so I can plug that in and get my shore power. I'll do that. The other thing is this little product which I haven't used yet, also from Amphibian, and it looks like it's all wrapped up. So this is a just a, a waterproof connector, right? Which is a pretty good idea. Okay, so this is a uh, here we are. All right, very clever amphibian. We sell these because I haven't got enough room there, as you can see. So we can, uh, it's always good to carry an extra lead, plug that in there. Do that. All right. And that is uh, one, it's strong, so it's not going to pull out. And two, it's waterproof as well. So I've got some power up here. And that'll now power up my caravan. So a couple of very handy little products. They're on the website. They're available. And if you're getting any sort of vanning, you really need those. And also these bags, look how good they are. This is a bit of sullage hose that come out of the flat out. All right, now we haven't stayed in the caravan park yet. So I'm just using that. All right, this fitting here goes onto that pipe and that uh, come with it as well. But we're just gonna hook that onto there and then I can just throw that out wherever I wanted to. That's the uh, fitting underneath here. There's uh, a tap, right, which is gonna release the gray water. Okay, there's a tap there. As we saw on the dial at the front, the digital reader, the tank is empty. But um, if I'm camping here, plenty of grass to soak up the water, I could leave that on all the time, like leave it open. If I find I'm getting water sort of come down to where I'm sitting, because it's sloping that way, well then I'd use the pipe to pipe it away, okay? One thing I've noticed also is, if that's left open, the, the two sinks, inside and outside, will drain a lot quicker because they've got to go through a breather otherwise. So if you've got that closed off, which is fine, the sinks tend to take a while to drain. But if that's open, they drain a lot quicker. So just keep that in mind as well. Right, we've got our sullage out, we've got our power on. Let's have a look at the water tanks. Uh, keep my keys here. The big key, right, that's for these locks. One, two, all right, they'll fit on both. Now you can't stick a hose like that in there and you do have to push it in a fair way, about that far to get them to fill, okay? And also you don't want to turn it on full bore. The water's just gonna, because remember there's a breather and all these type of tanks, they've got to have a small breather. It takes time for the air to come through, okay? So stick it down about that far. Now we've got this nice clean hose you don't turn it on full bore about half and then that will fill. Once it's all spurting out, then you can change to the, to the front one. If you turn that on full bore and only put it in that far, it's just gonna spurt out. And you might think it's full, but it's not. It's, um, it just hasn't had time to fill. All right, that little thing there is the filler for or the tank for the diesel heater. All right, you can see the uh, the level is about there, so it's a fair bit. It's probably a 10 litre tank, and we use that several times. Um, it's not the sort of thing you're gonna leave on all the time because it heats up the caravan so quick, you're gonna turn it on for 10 minutes and turn it off again, okay? Just to heat the caravan up. You can turn it down, but it's more so turn it on and heat it up. But that's what we use in a week. We probably use this every second night, so, you know, um, that'll give you a bit of an idea. But it's a good idea to, well, you can fill this up with a diesel when you're at the servo. If it gets below there, I'd be making sure you fill it up because that is such a brilliant thing, the diesel heater. 
you don't want to be um, you don't want that to run low we'll show you how that works when we get inside all right the spare wheel is going to lift out like that great place for a wheel cover bag and here is the overhand latch for the ensuite okay it's going to lift up like that you can unclip them now this has got a light in here as well so there's a switch for the light and I've noticed that if you're camping it's not a bad idea just to lift that up you maybe don't want to use the ensuite but you do have that light which will light up this whole area at the back very handy and also you've got the uh, the water at the back here as well okay now I'm not worried about locking that because it's it's undercover you know so I'm just pulling that out right you don't even need to close it really it's all closed up here's your all right just pull that out carefully that's your little hose that should be running and you can hang that there if you like hot and cold water all right so I've got cold and hot let's see what's it been 20 minutes I suppose with the gas on that uh, the covers off the gas bottles on that should be coming in hot water let's see oh yeah we haven't checked the switch that's not coming through hot yet so we're going to check that in a sec but you can see there if you're camping how handy that would be to have all right turn the hot off for a sec i've got a, a flicker switch i'll show you how handy is that to washing up and kids feed all sorts of things very handy to have that even though you might not be using this but if you do want to use this all right i won't put it down now if you do want to use that you can easily just drop it down peg it out etc in the other videos it shows not much instruction needed to drop this down okay and that's it so all right jakes let's um let's have a look at this door you've got a little latch there that's pretty simple you do have the option for one of these all right look how much dust you got on there I've got to refit that. I stuffed it up. Move, I had to move it. Didn't stick. But that's not a bad idea. But that really should come off when you're living inside the van. If you're staying inside, that is a, a vent for gas appliances in there. Although there's no gas appliances in here. Okay. So somebody did mention that. I mean, that's what it's for. If you have an internal gas stove, you must have that vent. But there isn't an internal gas stove on here. But um, just be aware of that. Certainly, though, you put that on, it's going to stop. Look at that there. There's no dust inside that area. The door here, right? Took me a while to figure this out. Okay, you lift it upwards. Okay, Jake didn't figure it out, did you? Right, because you're trying to pull it or whatever. It's just lifted up, comes out, and that's it. There is a lock on here. Very handy. We've also got this little piece here, which is handy as well. So if you wanted to stop the sun coming in at night or privacy, you can put that up. So that's an option that we can have. Um, but yeah, you want to basically keep the door closed because there's always bugs when you're camping. Let's pull the fridge out. Pulls out and locks. There's a bungee cord here. That's it. See these latches here? Really important to have them done up nice and tight. Okay. Now we've gone, gone look at that. That's a bit loose now. That one is loose. See that? Now we have gone around and done all these up ourselves to get it just right. But what happens to this um, this pinch weld rubber does compress we've also got rubber around here but it does compress over time so they do need to be nipped up or tightened a little bit so if you find you're getting a little bit of dust in all right, I've just nipped that up there now if you find you're getting a little bit of dust in the first thing to do is to uh, just adjust those slightly okay 10 mil little sockets all you need but it's important to get those to be nice and tight to get that dust seal and water seal working properly fridge is there you do have a spare socket here you've got some shore power wherever you see shore power that means your power from the the 240 volt from your house caravan or whatever um, or if you'll say inverter power it's coming from your inverter there is a couple of switches here which I'll turn on okay there's a switch for that and that means I can have a light in here also the battery compartment there's a fan runs here right so 
that's going to be pressurised in this area where you're driving. So if you wanted to leave that on when you're driving on a dusty road, you could. Although, you can see here, there's not a lot of dust got in there. That's minimal. And, uh, but you do have a fan there. Let's just have a look also at this compartment. And then we'll do the toilet. Okay, that's a bit of a storage bag I got. Um, well, I've noticed the one that we're doing at the moment He's got a 200 amp hour battery, much larger, so you'll have a smaller bag. This is a Truma hot water system here. Okay, and once we flick a switch, which is behind that thing there, that's the control, that will then start operating. You'll feel it gets a bit hot in there, you know, um, because that's a gas operated unit. Gas and 240, um, but it'll, it'll work off gas if the power's not connected. And uh, that's it there. There's also... There's two overload switches in there. You can see that, Jake. There's a yellow top one. That that one there. This, this one here. That's a gas isolate for this here. Here's a um, overflow like a normal hot water. Right. That's a gas, a hot water overflow. And also this little yellow one there is that's a, a, a system in line with a pump. That's over pressure valve as well. So if you hooked up too much pressure, that would release and dump water out of there. So there's a couple little valves there batteries here okay also you can see that if you're in there I had the plumber in here the first time doing this he had his headlight torch on and his phone trying to look in there and then right when he's finished we realized there was a light switch there would have made it a lot easier all of our all of our um, drift stock and batteries come with the app so you can download that free app and this will show okay reset that reset it there's your battery there Touch that, and that's showing final stages of, well, there's no sun at the moment, solar panels aren't operating, but that's the final stages of this uh, shore power charging the battery, 90%, nice and full, and it's still putting in six amps, okay? It's a 15 amp charger, but it's starting to trickle down because we're almost full, okay? The way to um, work out what you're using is to, if you, if you wanted to turn that off, and then you'll see what's operating on. You know, you can turn your fridge off. Basically, you want to get that down to a zero draw. Like if that's zero, that means you're not using any power, okay? If you turn this off, turn all the lights off, turn the fridge off, and you'll be, you should be at zero, okay? It means you're not drawing anything. Then you can turn things on like the light, and you'll see that'll be one amp. Or you turn the fridge on, it'll be four amps. So that way you can isolate and add up what, what's using what. So it's a really good way of doing it. It's surprising how much uh, things add up for power for sure and you might find that you know uh, if you've got the fridge on and all the lights on you might be using 12 amps that's per they're always per amps per hour so that's a 135 amp hour battery that means that I could use 13 13 amps for 10 hours okay so well, if I were doing that at night time there's like five hours maybe you know so it's surprising how much it adds up um, but it's good it's a good way of doing it Okay, so we've got the app open. Right, now I've, I've disconnected the shore power, I'm minus three here. So let's have a look down here. I mean, that could be charging, that'll be taking an amp. Let's turn things off. The pumps, I've got some lights on, LED lights. All right, so that's gonna drop at least an amp. Well, there, look at that, so three amps. I'll turn the fridge off. And socket's doing nothing. So really, Look at that, see we've got zero. Okay, I've got half an amp on a socket. Right, so that means that the sockets are pulling, well, probably 0.4, didn't quite read. But I'd say there's nothing charging. Well, this one's charging, but it's full. Right, but you've, you'll see there's little little LED, little uh, lights on all the sockets. See you on here. Right, you can see they're illuminated, right? So between all the different sockets, illumination, that's drawing probably a third of an amp. Okay, it's not quite reading. But if I turn the sockets off, I'll turn the LED on and lights. I've got the two main lights on and I've got the kitchen lights on. And that's it. And I'm using three amps. You can see that there, three amps. Now if I turn the outside lights on, front and back, right, and the bathroom, now I'm using five amps, okay? So all LED lights, but you know, there's um, 
five amps just with all my lighting. Now if I plugged in the, the lights on the awning, it's gonna be another amp and a half, which we can do. And uh, so it's very important to sort of isolate, just so you got it in your head, you know that if I got all my lights on, I'm using five amps. I'll turn the fridge on. Now probably that jump up around eight, five. The fridge is probably cycling, so it's not turning on. Okay, but that's gonna use about four amps as, as well. So the pump will draw, if the pump is on, What's this? Let's turn the fridge and the power. Let's put the power supply and the pump on. Well, you watch this when the pump turns on, it should be drawing about 15 amps. Let's have a look. Pump's cutting in, 8 amps, 9 amps, okay? All right, 15 wasn't right, I was guessing. But the pump's drawing 10 amps, okay? So while ever you got the shower on, you're drawing 10 amps. So again, it's a good idea. We've got a 135 amp hour battery. Technically, if I had, yeah, lights on and the fridge on and, and the pump, we're gonna be drawing at least 13, 14, 15 amps, and you'd have 10 hours of that, that's how you work it out, okay? If I had a 200 amp hour battery and I'm using 10 amps, you'd have 20 hours of that, okay? So, good idea, you got the app, it's all your data you need, but it's a good idea to know what uses what, okay? All right, turn all our things on, and let's have a look. Uh, in here. So let's look at this control panel here. Again, this is our lights, kitchen, and inside inside in the kitchen. Okay, so really great night time. All I can do is hit one button, turn off the lights in the kitchen and inside here. I don't have to go and turn each of these off, off and on. All right. But remember though, if you turn off the main switch, all right turn that back on, it's reset this. You have to come back here and turn it on again, okay? This is the same with the bathroom, on and off, okay? It's a good idea to leave that light on. I could turn that off, all right? Now, you don't know if that's really on or off, okay? But I've got, so if I leave that light on, and I can turn it on and off from here, okay? That also powers the fan. See the little fan, Jake? All right, so you gotta open that little hatch Good idea when you're traveling to close that down, although I've been having it open just a little bit, is fine. But you've got air in and air out. So ideally you want the air out when you're in the toilet. You want the air sucking out. So I've left that on air out and I've left the light on. So if you wanted to get up in the middle of the night and go to the toilet, then all you could do is press this button, lights on, fans on. The other thing it does too is it activates the, the um, toilet for flushing, okay? You can see that, with that, with this is turned off, right? So the light's off. This won't, won't work, okay? So that's why it's a good idea to leave that light on. Press that, I know the light's on, I know I've got power, and I can use that flush, okay? Now, very important, while we're in here, we may as well, now let's go back and can finish over here. So bathroom lights, this is the little lights in the fridge and the battery, we don't use those a lot, but if you wanted to get in there and use those lights, that's what that one is. This is the outside lights on the passenger side, which is this side, so you've got lights out here. We use that every night. Have a look out there, Jake, you can see those lights on above the door. Are they on? On, off, two lights there. They're not too bright, we found we use them every night. Nothing worse than LED shining in your eyes, but they weren't too bright, they were great, we use them every night. The other one's for a driver side, so a light on the other side. And this is a light for the ensuite, okay, which is the back light there. That's that one there. Um, fans, okay. We've got some sockets here. We've got fans. Let's have a look which one works on the fans. I think it's the sockets. Yep, see that? Okay, not the LED lights. So the sockets are gonna be running the fans and they'll also run these cigarette sockets, okay? So, yeah, if you're trying to turn this on and there's no power to it, all right, you know that you've got to have the sockets on. Same with these LED lights, these are great. Okay, that's gonna run off the LED switch, you can see that, okay? Now, I've, I've turned that on and I've got to come back over here and turn that on. So, this main light switch also does these little spotlights, okay? So it does these, all the lights. And that's a good thing. What we found at night time is we'll leave this one on, all right? Because that's a bit of night light. 
no one's using the bunk. Me and Darren and Bubba are over here, and with that one on, just leaves a little bit of light inside so you can see without blinding you, without shining in your eyes. Um, but yeah, they've all got individual switch. These are great, these lights. They were very handy. A couple over the bed as well. So I think that explains that area there. Here's the sink. This is a great little area. You know, washing your face, cleaning your teeth, those sort of things. Cleaning up. And you can see that's just going straight out. Draining. Now if that uh, grey water tank uh, outlet was turned off, that would take a while to drain. And the reason is because of the breather. So if you find it's taking a long time to drain, maybe open the valve and it'll drain really easy. Let's have a look under here. Yeah, see under this, Jake? That's what you were talking about before. I've got to show you the table. So this here, the light's on. A light on means there's a fault. It doesn't mean a fault, but it means that it's not operating, okay? So we've got to turn that off. This is the switch for the hot water. Turn that off. We've got two settings, 70 and 60 degrees, okay? 60 and 70. So if that light is on, the unit is not operating. It's not operating because the gas is turned off. You're out of gas. There's a fault in the system or the cover is in place. So we've found two ways that it's not working. One, because we left the cover in. Two, because we run out of gas. Turn that on, right? No light. That means it's operating. I heard a click in. Now that's going to be working as well. So that's going to be working now. Also a uh, light here. The fridge, battery lights. Okay, you've got a, a light in that compartment. In there is totally empty, okay? All storage space. See, nothing in there, but there is a light. Very handy. That compartment you can't access. This compartment you can't access. Fridge and hot water and battery. This compartment here you can, which is box with all your manuals and things. Storage. Uh, down here as well, while we're in this area, is some um, shore power and inverter power. So you're using a computer, inverter and a shore power, right? Obviously inverter and then from your shore. This is a little um, RCD, right? Some fuses, inverter, shore power and air conditioner, okay? And we've got in there, I've got a 12 and a watt inverter. This is the table leg here, all right? You can see how I just had that down, but I think the leg's in here. That's great storage in there for just things you don't know where to put, right? Pretty simple, that's how that works, and that's how that works. You can lock all those on. We found while that's a great table, we're sort of getting in the road a bit, so halfway through our camp, we took that off. We set that down there. This comes, that'll lift off. That can go down. All right. I can chuck that, well, I can put that in here. Better. And the table, oh, there it is. This mat goes on here. So we just found for what we were doing. That was better for storage, sitting down. The bunk can go up, of course, and just more space to sit and everything without that table sort of being in the road because we're using this as a nappy table. Storage while we're traveling, all right, there's some chairs, so set it up later. You can, this is a great area for storage. We found we're putting a lot of bags and things up here while we're, while we're, while we're using the van. We've got all of our bags up here, and then you can still sit that up like that. But obviously when you pack the van down, you've got to drop that down. All them bags can go in there. Uh, windows we've got to look at. Still got to look at the toilet. Let's have a look at the windows here. Um, these are great. All work the same. All right. You just got to be a little bit careful with this mesh. You can see that. But there's a magnet. So you've got block out. You've got the opening. Make sure when you're traveling that you do close all your windows properly. You've got a few settings there, just push it up, come down slowly, all right? It'll click in, click in, and just come down. Slowly like that. And there's a few settings, so you can see where you can put it on like that. 
right? That's not fully closed. You've got to bring it all the way in to fully close it. Make sure when you're traveling, you fully close every window. It might just be sitting down. You've closed it at night time, sitting like that. It looks like it's closed, but make sure you fully close that all the way. And that's that there. There's the window. It all operate the same. Uh, let's look at this. Let's look at the toilet while we're here. All right. Some people um, I've seen, this is one of our little buckets, which is great. Kylie was told me about this idea, to put that in there so that the water doesn't sort of leak when you're traveling, because if you leave it up there, hit heavy roads, there is water in this line. You can end up with that hitting the deck, maybe breaking, and then water leaking this area, okay? So uh, that's a good idea to use that when you're traveling. But otherwise, you know, you've just got those um, pretty simple with the shower. Okay, a couple of different settings. Very handy with the shower. We've been, um, you know, we've just got back from a trip. I haven't cleaned the van or anything yet, but got a bit of grass in there, but that's fine. Um, good idea to leave this window open. I'm going to turn that fan on. All right, so I can leave that on. Now with the toilet, right, I just noticed now this, this toilet is sort of half full. I've noticed a little bit of smell coming through. That's because I left this here open, okay? So that's in the open position, right, in the closed position. So when you've used the toilet, always make sure you close it off, stop any smell. And I've used one sachet in there. I mean, the toilets, you know, it's important to get the toilet right. Otherwise, it's, it, can, it can be smelly. Now, I've used one sachet. If you put too much chemical in, it's going to be a chemical smell. If you don't put enough, you're going to get a toilet smell. So you might have to play with that a little bit to, to learn how much to put in. If one sachet is not doing it for you, you can use a poor chemical and measure a little cup or something to just get the right amount. But you have to play with that to see what works. Make sure that once you've used the toilet, you turn it off. Okay, that's turned off. And I've also noticed when you're traveling, all toilets are the same. A lot of people got boats, cabins, all the same. When you're traveling, things pressurize, okay? And you should leave the seat down when you open it because it can a little bit splash up, okay? Now, normally it's sort of flushing water on top there, but little tip, leave it down. Leave this down when you open it and then you can sit down and use the toilet. Close it off when you're finished. Leave the fan on if you like. Have this here open and that will work really well. We'll pull the toilet out over there and have a look to show you a couple of things with that. Otherwise, yeah, you do have a fitting up here, which is good. You can use it up there. Great little shower system. Get yourself a couple of little mats. You can see we've got some simple mats there. These are great as well. Also the little pockets inside. These are brilliant. And these are the little um, Stockton toilet roll. What's happened to there? Anyway, that comes out through there. There we are, look at that. These are so handy. And uh, that fits into the little pocket there, which is a great way. Nothing worse than having, you know, a normal toilet roll that's fallen into the water and uh, becomes a soggy mess, you know. The little stock and bin works great there. This also works good. These are all your remote controls. All right, I'll show you these now. This is the uh, air conditioner, all right. Now, this will only really work on shore power because it draws about 60 amps. You can't really use this air conditioner. So we'll plug, we'll plug, well anyway, it's pretty simple. We just turn it on. It's a normal air conditioner. That is the uh, remote control here, the medic air conditioner, situated under the bed. All right, that's that one. You must be plugged into shore power for that to work. This is the remote control for the TV. This is the remote control for the little radio. This is the remote control for this actuator switch, but I don't really use that because I can just press the button. This, we hadn't worked out that one, Jake, did we? Mm. Channel one, channel two. Oh, I think this is for... This is the reverse? The reverse camera. I think that's what it's for. That's reverse camera. Plug. Oh. And this one is the most important one, the diesel heater. All right, I'll show you that. Press it, turn it on. You've got 
uh, up and down setting, pretty simple. I've got a sit set for, I don't know, 26 or something. A lot of things going on there, showing 23 degrees, shows the time, lots of stuff. It's still sort of getting going. But all you do is press that button on. Now when I first had this van, I turned it on, nothing happened. Then a bit of air come out, but it was cold air and I thought, oh, it's not working. Actually what it is, it just takes a couple of goes to get going, okay? So you turn it on, nothing will happen. It's working, it just takes time to get going. It'll take two, three minutes, okay? So after a little while, you'll hear the, uh, the, the, the fan start going. And then after a while, it'll click in, you'll hear the, uh, you'll feel the hot air, beautiful hot air. So let's leave that on for a little bit. Let's put these away. Let's also make the bed up. Okay. All right. Now, because all that's folded in, this is going to push out a little bit. All right. So we're going to put this back. All right. Pillows up there. And your sleeping bag. So you do have to push this mattress back up in there. Get it nice and tight. What I've done is put a bit of Velcro down here which I will do on the van. So that just stops this mattress sliding. Otherwise you find the mattress slides away and you've got a little gap there. So that's that. Um, you've got your lights and fan here. One thing with these windows, you can adjust them as you need to. Pretty simple, okay. But when you close the van up and drop this down, you must open, you must close those right up because these, if you leave those open, you can get water drops in here, and if that's open, it, it can drop. So we've had some huge thunderstorms here with enormous amount of rain, no leaks, but one time I dropped it down and left all these open, and I got a bit of leaking. This here was wet, obviously running out of here. So make sure you, basically, if you're gonna pack it up, you know, home, make sure you do all, the, I'd recommend do all the windows up, fully sealed, all of these, zip both of them all the way up, okay, when you pack it up. That's something I learned because I did get a little water in and that's why it's because of that there. These wires here, okay, or anything to do with the roof, so we've got solar, we've got LED lights, we've got a fan, that's all the cables coming through here, just so you know what that is. Uh, storage pockets along the top here, this is the handy thing I think you could um, get yourself, which is a little vacuum cleaner. Right, night time, if there's a few mozzies get in, I've had a spider in here, get that out, big bugs, whatever, so also you can vacuum the floor. Right, but a Makita vacuum cleaner, it's got a little fitting like this, it's got uh, one of these, look at that, I mean, uh, it's, this is a great, look at that, this is a great vacuum cleaner and um, handiest thing you can buy that I just put that in there so I'm using the Makita rattle gun the Makita blower very handy you know if you're in dust when you open up the kitchen and all the sort of areas your vehicle blow things down very handy and also the vacuum cleaner uh, you can do it in Milwaukee but uh, we've got some plugs down here a couple of power points here short power inverter power that's easy this is our pocket our, our um, what do you call that? That's the uh, toiletry bag, stocking toiletry bag. I've found it very handy to put your phone in when you're charging. I've got my torch there, my glasses sit in here. So even though it's a toiletry bag, it's actually, look at that, just hangs there, very handy. You've got all your cupboards. And also this one here was the most handy of all, which was pockets for Darany, for drink, things for barb, sunglasses, cream, whatever. So these are very good under the bed here we are look so that's starting to work now that took two three minutes but that now is hot air pouring out of there very important to make sure all right my dad the other day or a little while back he asked me to make him a bracket for his caravan and the reason was for a little angle bracket went over here and it was to stop the doona coming over the diesel heater outlet and i didn't quite understand what it was all about but now i know because your sleeping bag might come down like that you fall asleep, that's not going to be good, it's very hot air, so you just need to be careful of, aware of that. I found that it's the sort of thing that you would turn on, this will heat up very quickly, and then you turn it off. It's got to get up middle of the night, whack it on, heats up, turn it off again. I wouldn't be going to sleep with this on myself, um, but you'll find it heats up so quick, you can just turn it on, and let's turn it off. 
It's getting hot in here. Where is it? Here. Right, so all we've done now, turn it on. I would be able to adjust this. Let's go down. Right, it's going down in different settings. I'm going to turn, and then that would turn off, you know, if it gets to that temperature. All right, but I'm going to turn that off. It's off. Okay, but that will still operate for a little while. The fan's still on. It's got to cool itself down. The heat is off, but it's still going to fan for a few minutes. Let's look what else is this. That's air conditioner. That's the diesel. And here's the inverter right there. Turn him off. Turn him on. That's the inverter power there, which is running off the inverter inside. Okay, so if you want to use anything that says inverter power, you must have that on. But also an inverter itself will run. Let's have a look how much it runs. On the app. We'll turn everything off. Yeah, let's have a look how much that inverter is going to run on its own. Half an amp. Turn it off. There you go. So it's running 0.6 of an amp. Okay. And that's running independent to all these as well. Okay, so that's running independent. This power supply button is not turning that off. So you need to turn it off here. Um, but, I mean, inverters only for... We weren't using the inverter very much. Uh, I used it sometimes to charge my phone because just the sockets weren't... Sort of the plugs weren't working real good. Let's uh, stay there. Let's have a look under the bed. And I think we're not far from being done. Okay, so I've got some storage under here. I've got, there's the diesel heater there. There's the air conditioner there. I've got a bit of storage here for bags, spare bags, things. Always love to carry spare bags. There's your inverter there. There's your battery charger there. There is some settings on the battery charger which should be working. Right, you can, um, change that if you needed to but you won't need to it's set on lithium and it's set on 15 amps inverter there which the display is there you've also got a dc dc under here now the layout of this is going to be different but you've got the basic components dc dc with solar input inverter and your battery charger okay there's also you can see there is a main fuse for the inverter and uh, some cables under there so that's the main fuse for the inverter right there Oh, also here, Jake, you can see that's the breakaway. That light should be on, and that's, that's a battery in there. It's a very small 10-amp lithium battery. And that is what, uh, that light needs to be on, and it needs to be operating. That's, needs, that'll charge for your 7-pin plug. And uh, that's your breakaway battery. All right, you can see that's still running, but it's turned off. It's going to turn off very soon. TV is pretty simple. You've got the ability to plug into an antenna, radio, you can work that out yourself. That's not too hard to do, and that's TV and radio. Righto, so we're just going to a little bit around the front. Another quick point, remember that you've got a sign there, inverter power, shore power. That's uh, inverter power on this outside. These inverter power power points won't work unless, of course, the inverter is on, okay? We'll jump around this side. Quick little tip. Okay, this stuff here is electrical silicon spray, the best thing you can buy. Great for all your zips. I've also been putting it on. I've noticed we're getting a little bit of squeaking in here. You've got a spring and you've got wheels. I've been putting a little bit of this on in here. All right, up in there as well. This one's fixed, but this it will wheel out here, okay? A little bit of that. You probably only need to do that once every six months. But that just, it's such a big difference what this stuff makes, lubricates, and uh, that'll operate a bit, a little bit better, or a lot better. I just noticed there was some squeaking, put that on, and it was great. So keep a count of that with you all the time. Shore power, there's nothing you need to do but plug it in, okay? As soon as that's plugged in, that will activate the uh, charger, and it will... Um, it'll start charging the battery. So, well, if you were uh, using an induction cooker on the kitchen and you got shore power plugged in, you're at a cavern park or a mate's house, then you'd use the uh, shore power power point and it's running straight through this. Yeah, 
you got heaps of power. It's you know almost unlimited. But if you're using the sh the inverter power point, then you'd only have the limit, which is 1,200 watts on this system. If you've got a two and a half thousand or two thousand watt inverter, you've got that much power. So it depends on the size of your inverter. Wanted to show you the bearings. Okay, Let's get rid of this. When you're travelling, uh, most of the problems is always going to be around the wheels. Okay, a couple of things to check. Now the bearings on these, we're checking the bearings when we um, when we pick it up. Okay, because bearings once they're new, they've got a seat. They've got a seat in place. Okay. And from the factory, they might have not done up. We've noticed the ones when they get from, say, Melbourne up to Gloucester, where they're picked up from, the bearings can be a little bit loose, so we're going to nip them up. But it's really important to check those bearings. And how you check them is just give it a good, a good wobble. You can do it like that. There's no play in those bearings there. You've got to give it a pretty hard shove. If you feel any movement in there, you can feel any rocking, the bearings do need to be nipped up. What you do is you take the cap off, you take off the, the hub cap, all right, you've got to knock that off with a screwdriver or a hammer and then you nip up that nut. There's a, there's a, there'll be a cotter pin, pull the cotter pin out, do it up a little bit with a spanner. Basically do it up tight and then you back it off half a turn. But you, to do that you have to have the wheel off the ground. But the point is, it's very important to keep an eye on these. It's not something you just drive off and forget. The bearings will sort of seed over time, they will get a bit of loose over time. You probably for the life of the bearing you might have to nip it up at least in the first thousand kilometers probably that's it but you need to keep an eye on them the other thing you need to do is to is the brakes okay electric brakes are a lot more complicated than they sound they, they can have all sorts of problems mud and grit and rust and sand and can get into them so you can have problems with them you might have left the handbrake on you might have you know all sorts of problems so just keep an eye on them okay I always, when I'm traveling, every now and then, I will just reach in there and I'll touch them. Now, if you've just driven down a long hill, like heading into Jindabyne and right down there, you know, a long hill, that's going to be very hot. So be careful. But if you haven't used your brakes just recently, a lot, just give it a bit of a touch. You can feel the brake drum and also around this area. If anything feels overly hot and you haven't been going down a long hill, there's something wrong. And if that's the case, jack it up, turn the wheel. If you turn the wheel and you hear some rumbling or it, it should turn and feel pretty smooth okay you can rock it any movement you need to fix it and if you feel any tightness or rumbling or squeaking squeaking not so much because it could be the drum in the brakes a bit of sand but if you feel any rumbling the bearings must be looked at okay so the sign of a hot bearing will will transfer through to here and, and to the drum and if it's anything hot there's some sort of problem you need to look at it okay so it's natural with a trail, I've been towing trails for years and years, heavy trails, it's always just a natural thing to walk past and put your hand on here. If everything's reasonably, it should be cool, okay? It should not be hot. The only time it would be hot is if you've gone down a long hill and you've been using those brakes, so keep an eye on that. Tires, I think it's a good idea to pump them up 50, 60 PSI, okay? 30, 40 is no good on these on the road. You need to pump them up fairly full. Uh, we've got these 50 at the moment, okay? Uh, okay, with the toilet, all right, uh, I mean it's not everyone's favourite subject, but you do have to know what to do, and uh, that's the area in there. That little cover plate that you saw right at the start of the video, the white cover plate that's in the orange bag, goes over that. I've taken that out because I found when you push it in, that cover plate slid up in behind there and got in the road. This cover plate here, I'm not really sure what it's for, but I'm going to sicker flex. I've got some white sicker. I'm going to sicker flex that down, right? And also, see those two little holes there? They're sort of locator holes. I don't know what this is for. I'm going to sicker this up and sicker flex that down, right? And I'm going to sicker that other cover plate down, right? I think it's just for storage, this section here. But see how that's bent a little bit? Right, so what happens when I put that away, this flies up in there and, and, and there's a problem. So I'm going to sicker flex those down and that'll be then watertight in there. So if I've had any leaks, I can just hose it out, okay? If I had any leaks in there now, to ho clean that out, everything's going to fall into there and then you've got to mop that out, which has happened to me once. So i would taken these out and, I, and we were getting a, a really bad smell in the toilet inside. I'm like, what the hell? open this up and you could see a bit of 
you know, uh, a bit of a mess there, a bit of yellow mess, right? It was smelly, and it's amazing how quickly that smells. So what it was, was because this was out, that's actually a locator for the back of the toilet. So I think the toilet was, was sitting, this canister was sitting back a little bit and it wasn't, the, the, the hole wasn't lining up and there was a bit of spillage, right? You don't want, you don't want a bit of spillage, right? So I'm gonna stick a flex those down. I don't need that little cavity in there. I'm gonna stick a flex that down so that if there is any spillage, I can just wash that out. And every now and then you probably wanna wash that out also, okay? But now that that's, that one's in place, there shouldn't be any spillage, right? This one will just lift in. Locks in place there, all right? Make sure it's locked in place. If it's not locked in the right place, that's not going to be right over the hole and you could get spillage. So make sure it's exactly locked in place. Pretty simple when you've got to pull it out. That's the handle, all right? When you go to empty these, that's a button to release the pressure open that up, tip that out, don't touch that, and that's how to, you've got a handle there, wheel it to your dump point, and take that off, wash it all carefully, or wash it all, open that up and wash it, wash it inside, you've got to always put a bit more water in to give it a good flush, and carry it back, make sure you put one of those little capsules in, all right, make sure you don't forget that, all right, put that in, back in place, that's it, so that's pretty much it, main thing to make sure is it's located properly and you've got your fresh capsule in there for your, uh, your concentrate to make sure there's no smell. If you're getting smells in that area, all right, if it's, if it's a chemical smell, a really strong, you've probably got too much chemical in there. And what you might have to do as well is if that's half full for a while, all right, you haven't emptied it's half full, it's been half full for a few days, you may find you need to put another chemical in. So if you're getting toilet smell, you don't have enough chemical, if you're getting too much chemical smell, you've got too much. So you might find you've got to adjust that a little bit. If you're getting, if you've got chemical in there and you're getting smell, you could be some spillage. You need to have a look at how it's, how it's operating. All right. What else, Jake? I think that covers everything underneath. Good idea to have a crawl underneath with a torch, right? So you can understand what's going on. We've got our grey water tank, our two other water tanks there. Um, you've got your suspension. The suspension is something that's, um, you know, if you know what's going on, the common thing is, is the nuts, the, the bolts that are holding the, the, the shockies on can come loose. Uh, that's not uncommon to happen. So you can get under there if you're doing your rough roads, always get underneath and check those. But I would be uh, really, a, a caravan's not much different to a car. There's a lot going on. You really should be taken to a mechanic every 5,000 kilometres, particularly in the first 1,000 kilometres. Um, you know, if you don't know what you're doing yourself, you can easily do it yourself to have a good check. Check your bearings, check your wheels, check the systems underneath. But if you don't know what you're doing, then um, take it to a mechanic. First 1,000 Ks, every 5,000 Ks, um, you know, that sort of thing. So it's not something you just hook up, drive around Australia and never think about what's going on in the caravan. It's not much different to your vehicle. You've got to keep an eye on what's happening. Things can go wrong. You sit on the side of the road, things can go wrong. The other thing too, I'd say if you've got a, a lighter vehicle like a Hilux or a Ranger, it is only two ton tear, can be two and a half plus by the time you fill everything up. And if you're going to be towing with a lighter vehicle, single axle, there's 10% on the draw bar, so it's gonna be 200, 250 kilos on the, on the tow bowl. And uh, you might seriously consider a set of uh, any sway bars okay which connect on here and that does make a big difference right so when your tow ball weights down the front of the car's up your steering's a bit lighter and when you put your foot on the brake it's transferring the weight differently okay but if your front wheels are up you don't have as much braking capacity okay it is a single axle different if you've got a dual axle so the sway bars are just going to balance it out they're going to put the weight from the tow bar down on the front so you've got full braking capacity so just keep an eye on that. If you do have a lighter vehicle and you're finding that you may need it, then it's, it's probably recommended for more than 150 to 200 kilos on the, on the tow ball to consider sway bars. A bigger extended vehicle like the 79, a bit of a heavier vehicle, maybe not so much needed, but something to consider having sway bars even on a van this size. Right, I think that's pretty much it. Again, it's a handover video. 
That shows all of the components on how to operate this van uh, for a customer who's purchased. And we can sort of add some more things later on, but I think that pretty much covers everything from there. All right, no worries, thanks for that.